Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Dremio's UI. So here I'm connected to a cluster, uh, which has a lot of the sources that we just talked about. Uh, so the UI comprises of the sources, which you're seeing here at the bottom. Uh, I already have a few of the sources uh, for our demo. Uh, it's very easy to add multiple sources. So uh, you just click on this add source button and you can see here the meta stores that are available, the object storage that's available, uh, the different uh, relational sources that we talked about are also available. So I'll be showing you uh, a few of these. Um, so first I've got uh, Postgres. Uh, I've connected that uh, to an existing Postgres uh, environment. Uh, with version 24, which, which just came out, we also actually introduced a Dremio to Dremio connector. Uh, so I've got that configured as well. Uh, then I've got two different uh, sources of S3. And if we take a look at uh, the settings here, I'm using access key. And I'm also providing a specific bucket here. So you can do that and you can do many different uh, configurations, exactly what you want, uh, the, what you want available. Uh, and you can see here our default uh, table format is Iceberg. Uh, you can change that to Parquet as well, but uh, out of the box, uh, it's uh, Iceberg. And then uh, I've got HDFS uh, set as well. Uh, I'll show you that I'm using uh, this uh, path here. So all the data that's in user demo will be available to Dremio. Uh, and then I've also got a Hive configured here. Uh, so those are all the sources. Uh, next, uh, we'll see here, before we get into this, uh, the spaces, uh, on the left tab here, we've got what I showed you are the data sets. Then we've got the SQL runner, which is the query environment. So you can actually access all of the data uh, because SQL is uh, something that's most uh, useful for users and most people are used to it. Uh, you can directly come in here and start to see what are uh, the files that are available through S3 and start to actually uh, consume that data. Uh, you can see what's available in Dremio, uh, what's available in HDFS, uh, and start to actually write queries against all of those. Hive as well, so on and so forth. So we'll be doing some of that. And, and then lastly, here on the left side, you've got uh, the jobs view as well. So we, we'll be running some jobs and we'll take a look uh, into uh, each one of those. Uh, so we talked a lot about semantic layer. So that's how Dremio organizes a semantic layer. Uh, it's called spaces. You can think of it as a schema in a, in a relational context. Uh, so these are basically spaces that you create and you can do that uh, just by clicking on add space. And then you can see here, you can grant access to them as well. Uh, so staging, uh, I've got a number of different uh, uh, data sets here. So uh, what I'll point out here is the green icons are what we call virtual data sets or VDSs. So you'll see here there's shippers underscore PG, which is Postgres. So I've just named it like that so we know where it's coming from. So if I come in here and look at Postgres, we'll see that there's that shippers, um, uh, shippers uh, data set, right? And you can see here this is a purple icon. So this is what's a physical data set. So because I'm on the relational database here, on object storage here, uh, the purple icons are the actual physical data set, whereas these green icons are the virtual data set. So in Dremio, we never want you to copy any data. We never want you to um, build cubes or, or any type of uh, existing aggregations and build and copy the data. Everything within Dremio is virtual. So we're saving on the storage costs as well while making it extremely fast. So these are all uh, the different um, uh, virtual data sets that I have available that I'll be working as part of the demo. We'll take a look at orders, for example. So it's as simple as coming in here, clicking on that. And if you do preview, you'll see here the data is pulled over just like as if this was a relational table. So this is something that most of the customers, most of the users are used to. Uh, so even though the file is a parquet file, it's orders data, it's stored in S3, uh, as we can see right here. So this graph view, the lineage shows you the lineage of what I'm looking at. So I've called it S3 just for this demo so that we can kind of follow along because we've got many different sources. But you can see here, by simply going to the graph view, you can see where it's coming from. So this virtual data set, again, is a green icon. It's called orders S3. It's coming from orders table in AWS uh, S3 right here. So we'll go back to staging. So again, staging is kind of the one-to-one the -one or the raw data. 
Uh, and then uh, I'll show you an example of HDFS, for example. So this is a CSV file that's stored in HDFS. We can come in here, and again, this is the virtual data set. This is a physical file, which is stored on HDFS. Uh, and then we're going to go into uh, the business and the application layer as well here in a minute. All right, so before we look at the business and application uh, space, let's go ahead and uh, build out a virtual data set. So we're going to start with uh, a data set that's available in S3. So these two S3 uh, sources are just pointing to different buckets. So I'm going to use this one here. I'm going to come into CSV files, and we want to use and build a virtual data set uh, for the U.S. States. So we simply go here to format file. It automatically recognizes that it's a text file and we'll extract the field names and say save. So right now, Dremio recognized that, stored it as metadata, and it's saying, okay, well, you can go ahead and start querying. So right there, very simply, that data set that's in uh, S3 is now available for querying. And we'll go ahead and save that as a VDS or a virtual data set in staging, and we'll call it U.S. states. So you can see here now in the staging space, I've got U.S. states. So earlier, if you looked at S3 CSV files and U.S. states, it had a CSV extension to it. We want that to be a little bit more business friendly. So now it's just called U.S. states. If you look at it and look at the graph, you can see here it's pointing to that S3 uh, file, which is in, in S3. So that's how easy it is to create all of these. And that's what I've done for our demo today. So now let's jump into the business space. So the business space is where you start to uh, bring data sets together so that they're more useful for analysts and consumers. So first we'll take a look at uh, order info. So order info, what I'm doing here is I'm actually joining uh, the orders S3 table and the order detail table. And again, we can simply come in here and take a look at it. This is the order info virtual data set. It's joining the two uh, data sets in S3, and we can start to run that, right? So now you can see that now we've got uh, a data set that's joining two tables within S3. So if we go back to uh, our business layer, uh, let's move on to the next level, right? By bringing in more data sets. So as you're uh, moving and moving from one stage to another, which we covered uh, in our approach, uh, you can bring in other data sets as well. So in this case here, before we run it, let's take a look at it. So now I'm joining uh, S3 as well as Postgres. So my, my uh, products information here is, as you can see, is in Postgres. So we'll go ahead and run that. And that runs and brings in the product name and the category ID as well. So earlier we just had order information, now we have product information as well. And then lastly, we'll look at the category information. So we want now to join not only what we're joining earlier, but we also want to consume some data from Hive, right? So as you can see, Dremio makes it very, very easy uh, to connect to multiple sources, join that data. And from a business user perspective, they think it's just a data set that's available to them. They don't know where it's coming from, but all of the data is available to them at a sub-second latency. So we'll go ahead and run this. And uh, now we've got our order information, we've got our product information, and now we also got our category information. So the product information was in Postgres, category information was in Hive, and now that's all available uh, through Dremio as if it was just in a single uh, data warehouse or database uh, that, cost that users are used to, right? So that's that view again. So now let's take a look at the application layer. Uh, we, we need to uh, look at uh, shipping information and we'll do uh, que some curation, some data curation within there. So as you can see here, uh, I'm doing some data curation. I'm doing a two char and a case so that I can get the day from the ship date. And the shipping happens uh, the second day. So if that happens to fall on a Saturday or Sunday, uh, then uh, we want to push the ship date out by one day so that it happens on a weekday, right? So you can see here, I'm using case statement, two char, uh, you know, typical functions that are available uh, to business users. So if I run that, uh, what you're looking at here is I've got the order information, but I also have a column, additional column, a virtual column, uh, which is a ship date, which I've just set plus two, right? So you can see order date is seven, four, ship date is gonna be two days later. 
And if that happens to fall on a Saturday, in this case, which is a Saturday, then I want the ship date to be a Monday, which is the day, right? So that's all, you know, type of curation that um, business users do, which is very, very easy to do in Dremio by using um, our function capability, uh, which is right here, right? So uh, that's what you add. Uh, so by doing the add, uh, all the functions uh, are available here. Uh, so it's uh, readily available, and very easy for you to look at. All right, now let's take a look at uh, some governance uh, capability. So what I have here in the application layer, I've got another data set, uh, customer details. And you can see here, what I've done is I've said, if the query user is a shipping agent, then I want to concatenate and mask some data. I don't want them to see the whole phone number. And I also don't want them to see a number of different columns, right? So this virtual data set is pointing to the customers. Uh, it happens to be an HDFS. Uh, so I want to only select few of the columns. And I also want to then mask the data depending on what the user is, right? So if I run that, right now you can see I've got the whole phone number that's showing up and a bunch of other information that's showing up as well. Um, now, if we were to go and log out of this user and log in as a user called shipping agent. Now you can see here, I've only granted them the application layer and only these virtual data sets. So they don't have the ability to look at any other sources, uh, relational or object storage. They don't have ability to look at the other spaces as well. So this is a very, very easy way to enable governance and you know exactly what you want to grant a specific user to. Uh, so in this case, a shipping agent would only need access to certain information. So if I look at customer details in this case and run this, you can see here the phone number has been masked because Dremio recognized that it's a shipping agent user. They don't want to be able to see all the information. So we only have a few of the columns that are available here. If we go back and look at the customers, that view does not have masking enabled. So you can see here, we can see all of the information. We can see the phone numbers and all of that type of detail as well. So it's very, very simple to do masking. And I'm just showing you a couple of capabilities. Uh, we offer a lot more, uh, including uh, rollback access control, fine grain, a row and column level uh, as well. So we're going to go back to Dremio go back into the Dremio user, which has access to all, all the, the views. So I'm gonna show you two more things here. One, uh, let's take a look at uh, the SQL runner. Uh, one capability that we just uh, added very recently was uh, if we look at the SQL that I'm pulling, so we do have uh, querying ability right, right here, so you can access all, all the data. And we also uh, have a scripts tab here, so you can create scripts, scripts and, and, and save them and execute them. So I've got this script here. Uh, one of the capabilities we added was uh, in order, uh, is to format it very quickly. So you'll see here uh, by doing a function on my keyboard, uh, Dremio automatically formats that. So that's a really, really nice feature. So now if I go ahead and save it, uh, if, if I were to come back into that, you can see here it's, it's formatted and saved like that. So that's a new feature that we've just uh, enabled. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me go back into uh, Dremio. As you can see, it's one of the sources, uh, and we can start to actually consume um, the data uh, from another uh, from another uh, Dremio environment. So this one here is pointing to our Dremio.org environment, which is a demo environment. So I'm connected to that, and I can see uh, all of the data. Uh, this is my data set in that environment. You can see here, I can start accessing that data. All right, so next I'm gonna show you that it's not only uh, easy to consume and cure the data from a Dremio UI, uh, but now I'm gonna go ahead and switch my screen to uh, a IDE tool to show you that you can do the same thing from uh, any IDE tool like the data visualization or DB Weaver or Toad and so on and so forth. All right, so here we're looking at uh, data visualizer. Uh, it's an IDE tool, you can use uh, other similar tools. I've uh, connected to Dremio, so the same environment that we're using for our demo uh, with the shipping agent. Uh, so by going into that shipping agent, you can see here, uh, this user only has access to that application space. So that's also available in this tool. And then we were looking at uh, the customer detail information. So if I come in here and look at the data, you can see here, 
The masking rules have also been uh, passed through to this tool. So it's not only the Dremio UI tool that restricts that, but any tool that's connecting as that user uh, will also restrict that. Uh, so in this case, this user only has access to the application space and to these three tables of virtual data sets or VDSs in, in Dremio, and that's what sh shows up here as well. All right, the last thing we'll do uh, for our demo today is uh, take a look at Data Lakehouse. Data Lakehouse brings the data warehouse capability uh, and the economies of scale and low cost of data lake together uh, into this capability, which allows you to actually do data manipulation on the data. Um, so I'm going to go into our SQL runner into scripts, and I've got a few scripts saved here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a, a iceberg table using our staging table here. So that's actually going to be created within our S3 bucket. So now I've got a table called customers iceberg, and it's storing this data uh, within uh, in iceberg format in Parquet, and it's got the metadata here as well, right? So that's one of the options is to store the metadata within um, uh, within S3, and it can be many other uh, sources as well. Uh, and then let's take a look at what did we create, right? So we created this ice, customer's iceberg table, uh, which you can see here is iceberg format, and it's uh, it was just created. Uh, we can go ahead and do a quick select against that, right? So customer's iceberg table uh, in S3, and you know we've got all the data that we've been looking at. We can go ahead and insert a row. Uh, so I'm just inserting one row here. And if we go back to the S3 bucket, uh, you can see here more files are being created as we're making those changes. And once this uh, data is inserted, uh, we can go ahead and select again. So we'll see here that this is uh, the data that I just added here, right? So customer ID, ABCD, Dremio, my name, and uh, the city that I added, right? So that's been available. That's now available in the iceberg table. Uh, and similarly, update is very similar to what we're seeing here. Uh, and then go ahead and delete some data. So now what's happening with deletes is obviously these files are still kept, right? Uh, but uh, Dremio is managing all of that. And all of that data is being stored in these metadata files and then the manifest files. And that's what makes the performance really good because all of the older files will not be referenced in the metadata. So. Uh, now we've go, gone ahead and deleted that file. And if we take a look at it, uh, you'll see here that that, um, uh, that row is gone now, right? And then we'll go ahead and drop that table. So you have the ability to not only create, but drop the table. So you can see here it's been dropped. If we come here and refresh it, now that customer's, um, uh, uh, customer's iceberg table is no longer there in S3 and there's no you know sign of it. So. Uh, if we do a select against it, uh, we're going to get the table doesn't exist, right? The table was not found. Yep, so that's it for our demo today. Thank you for attending. Hopefully you learned uh, Dremio's capabilities and how we can help you modernize uh, your uh, Hadoop environment to a modern uh, lake house engine like Dremio. Uh, 